And we are back. This is episode 22 of 1000 Failures. I'm your host, Darius Marcelin, and today I have actress Melissa Williams on the show here today. Now, Melissa, you can see Melissa on BET's Oval, Ruthless. She has series regular roles, recurring roles, and she's going to talk today about how she got her breakthrough. She's going to tell you about the casting process. You know, I like to ask these in-depth questions about who was in the room, what your casting process was like, and she goes deep into it. And she's she was just really cool. It was such a dope interview. And she talks about just going to Tyler Perry Studios, what it was like meeting him, and just how fast they work on those sets. <laughs> You're going to learn a little bit about how fast they work on on these soap sets so she goes into talking about that and it's just really cool to connect with different creatives on a space where we're technically in a lockdown and our jobs are on hold and there's so much uncertainty right now and a lot of us are scared so just hearing a cool positive story and even her telling what she's doing to deal with what's going on right now which is even good to hear as well so this is Melissa Williams and wait before I forget I have my alone together hat uh, my buddy Freedom he started this company as the lockdown started and he wanted to launch it before but he started it when the lockdown started it propelled him to, to get off the ground and just go for it and all proceeds that from the come from buying these hats go straight to charity and to feed in the needy so Uh, It's for a good cause and this isn't a paid advertisement or anything like that. It's just I like to support my friends. So if you go onto Iconic Lids, Iconic Lids on Instagram, you can find out more and just order a hat or two. And um, we're all in this together and I will make sure and put out new content every single week for you guys because I know how much it means for some people. So... If you're not following me on Instagram yet or YouTube, I, I, this is brand new. YouTube is a brand new platform for me. So if you're not following me on YouTube, please subscribe right now and you get the content first. And all my podcast listeners, we are already on this uh, train together. We're here. Let's do this. Um, this is episode 22 with Melissa Williams. We are live. So hi, Melissa. How am I? Yeah. How are you doing? I'm, I'm wonderful. I can't complain. I'm literally here with my family in Oklahoma, and we're just waiting these days out. I know. Do you live in LA? I live in LA, but I'm not in LA. My family's in Oklahoma, and um, once they told us that. It will be till April 30th. I was like, okay, I want to be with my family. I want to be with my mom and my sisters and my nieces and everybody. So I'm here. So LA right now is, it's kind of eerie at night. I live on um, La Brea and Wilshire. So it's kind of, you know, a kind of crossroads section in LA. And it's like mm-hmm. at night, normally when it's so busy, it's so quiet. So you aren't missing anything here in LA. <laughs> I literally was like, I wonder what people, you know how when you leave or you go back home, you always wonder what, what your friends in LA are doing or like what's going on. But thank you for the update. I'm not missing anything. You know you're not missing anything. It's better to be in Oklahoma right now with the fans. So. Trust me, it's everything. I love my family. Yeah. All right. So I, this podcast and the 1000 Failures platform is basically a, a, a place where creatives could come on hear amazing, inspiring stories. Mm. And I guess in this time when we need a lot of that right now, you know, I feel like starting doing this right now from the remote way via Squadcast, which I'm not a sponsor of that, but Squadcast is helping me out uh, to do this and make this happen. So thank you for being on the show. And I definitely would love to jump into how did Oklahoma shape you to be this 
Hollywood girl, what what in Oklahoma inspired you to come out and um, and be this amazing lead? Well, you know, you know what? I yeah, okay, not necessarily something in Oklahoma. I think an a situation happened to me when I was younger, and uh, I got locked out. And my mom was like, "You have to go to the neighbor's house because I I can't get off." So I went to my neighbor's house, and she had played a Shirley Temple uh, movie for me, and a couple of them. She had only had for some reason like Shirley Temple collection, so. She gave me a Coca-Cola. I had never had a Coca-Cola in a glass bottle, honey. I thought I was rich. She kicked my feet up. I was watching Shirley Temple, and I got really inspired because I was like, here's this little girl who's doing things that I already, you know, do. I'm, I sing around the house. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I call dancing. Um, <laughs> and, like, this is just something that I am used to, so I want to find out more about it. And once I found out that it was acting, you know, the entertainment industry, I told my mom, I told my step uh, dad at the time, and they just they were really supportive. Immediately put me in classes. My mom put me in dance classes. Um, I was in from church place to local place here in Oklahoma City at the mm-hmm. theater companies that they have here, and I just kept. I just kept going. It was because of that moment, though. Like, it kind of sparked in me the fact that I don't have to wait time an adult. Here's a little girl in front of me doing the exact same things that I want to be doing. So how do I start? And it was it was basically by sharing it with my family. How, how tough is it being... I visited Oklahoma one time. Uh, this passing through a trip. A trip. Oh, and everybody I, always passes through. With a cowboy bar. But how, how tough is it you think for as this is someone in Oklahoma right now, not seeing a lot of people like you, you know, created a path for themselves and do it. It's a lot easier when you're in LA. You see so many people doing it. It becomes possible. But how how tough was it for you at that time to to just imagine something that you have probably not a lot of people around you were doing? It was really tough. It was really tough because it was really tough because no one thought that big I think like I um wouldn't you know tell my friends about the shows that I was in and I was even in the newspaper out here for one of the shows shout out to Ben Hall who was the theater director that put us in uh, Little Shop of Horrors which was like my first big musical we had we had the plant I don't know if you've seen that movie but we had the real you know huge plant right. that grew from a little baby plant to like deep, 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 like the big one um and I was uh, one of uh, the doo-wop girls. Mm-hmm. And it was just a good, I was in the newspaper for that. And they even put it up at my school and nobody said anything to me. And I was just like, you guys don't get it, but you'll get it. This is a big deal. It. This is the absolute big deal. deal. I'm being recognized with, along with my cast for doing a play. Like we're entertaining and we're young. We're putting on this phenomenal show that's usually put on by adults. I mean, I think, some high schools do it but like for me it was a big deal so i just was like okay this is the moment where i realized that nobody understands what i'm trying to do with my life so what i'm going to do is show you oh so when that, that that's when you came with the master plan to mm-hmm. move to well i i saw drumline so drumline had a really big effect on my life that movie with nick cannon yeah. i saw that movie i saw him at this school that i thought was real I thought it was a real school, um, Atlanta a and I think that's what it's called. It's not real, by the way. Um, <laughs> I tried to apply, honey. I was serious. I was like, I want to go to that school. Nick Cannon is that. I need to have that experience. Drums. I don't even play drums. I just want to have that experience. Um, so I applied to the school they filmed it at. Once I found out, it was that AUC. Then I applied to Park Atlanta. I applied to Spelman as well, but I got accepted to Park. And immediately, I was like, out of here. I'm out of here. I told my high school they made an announcement. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Melissa Williams is going to Clark Atlanta. It was like no one no one still I think didn't realize like where I was trying to take myself. Yeah. And so for it all to come full circle right now and be like just happening for me is it means a lot. Did you have a plan to go from like Clark Atlanta to maybe LA or it was just one step at a time at a time? It was one step at a time because I didn't know. I, I, um, yeah, I was doing the theater. I was doing theater at Clark. My major was theater. I did, um, 
extra work with Tyler Perry, actually. And um, I, I just didn't know. And I was like, well, I don't want to be an extra anymore, right? Isn't that crazy? This man, I had to tell him, I was like, do you know I was an extra for you? <laughs> this is what was crazy. It? Hmm? Full circle for sure. And so I, um, once I was like tired of only being offered to be a, an extra as an adult or as a 20 year old, I was like, this is what I was doing when I was a child, honey. I got to move. I got to go where they get the lines. Right. Where's that? You know? Okay. Not New York because I, I, I'm not focusing on Broadway right now, but I would like to do it. But once I found out LA is the best option, she was out of there, honey. I was like, I got to. So you moved straight from uh, college to LA? Well, I stayed in Atlanta for like four years after college because I was pursuing music as well. I'm still pursuing music, but um, put it off. Uh, I want to hear your stuff. You got to talk about your stuff is. I want to hear your stuff. Oh, listen, can you hear, if I played something through this, could you hear it? I mean, I actually, it might cut, I will play some for you it right might now. cut the song, but send it to me and I'm going to play it back on the podcast after. And that's what I'm talking yeah, about. You know, that's know. what I mean. What type of vibe? Okay, so the first one is, is it is a Caribbean vibe, um, the beat. But yeah, I don't want to ask right, you right. to tell me. I want you to tell me what you feel, okay. so that way I can see what people right. first. You know what I mean? Yeah. First listen is, and then the other one is like, like uh, I would describe it like trap R and B. So here we do. When I'll re-edit this podcast episode, and at this moment, I'm gonna drop the tracks. And that's what I'm talking about. Because yeah. I'm excited. So I'm sure other people probably are excited to hear some of these songs. So we'll drop the tracks. You send it to me after. We'll drop the tracks. So you're just a creative, basically, coming out to college in Atlanta and then hit L.A. And my path was, well, Trinidad. Didn't Trinidad, New York. So okay. I'm in New York, grew up in New York. And then... LA, but I remember back in like 2011, I moved to LA three years ago, 2011 mm-hmm. saying, all right, I have to save up this amount of money to move to LA. And then it, it was like a number was just growing every single time something would happen. And you know, it just never materialized because it was just, I didn't take a leap of faith at that time. Mm-hmm. And then it just happened one day I was uh, getting makeup done on a set and this guy was like, you do so good in LA. He's like, I can see it. We should be roommates. Da, 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 da. Oh, wow. I, I, what? I, and, and from there, I was like, okay, maybe not roommates, but I booked a one-way ticket to come to uh, <laughs> two months. That was what you needed. I know. So what was what was your moment? Mine was, um, wow. I mean, how do you go after that story? Gosh. I don't know. I mean, no, really, seriously. My, <laughs> yes, bravo. Mine was, um, it was definitely when I, I feel like it was after the experience from Daddy's Little Girls. I called my dad and I was like, Dad, I just did extra work for Tyler Perry. And I saw Gabrielle Union. I saw Idris Elba. And these are up, this is up close. This is like me arm's length. Okay. And I'm like, this is what I want to be doing. And I got this up close view. Then, then, then Tyler Perry too, on top of that, like he, it just was a moment for me that made me say, I want to be on that level. So what do I have to do to get there? Like, I don't want to be, there's nothing wrong with being in a crowd, but I had already done that. I, I, literally my, my role title when I was a child was crowd child. So I was willing to do it in LA because I did do it when I moved to LA. I did do a little more extra work, but that moment on Tyler Perry set when I when I had that close of a experience with actors that I admire, I was like, okay, this is I gotta go for it. I have to go for it. And then too, much like you, but it was more so in LA, people would like come up to me and tell me things like, Are you on TV? You know, like say stuff to me, speaking in the speaking to me in the area where I had my desires and my dreams. And so I just knew like no, I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path, and I'm going to just keep going. And literally my last job, the job I got, I had before I got the Oval uh, last year, the girl that was hiring me was like, girl, you're not going to be here that long. I already know you're going to be on some role somewhere, like like literally. Right. And so 
I don't take when people say stuff like that, like even for you, I don't take stuff like that lightly. And I think that the people who do may miss that opportunity, the window of opportunity, but the people who don't and, and literally believe it because they somebody else is technically believing in you, um, then you take that belief and you just go for it. It's, it happens. Yeah, the timing so, is right. So many messages in our lives. I, I remember one episode I was talking to someone, I forgot who it was, but we were just talking about mm-hmm. how many times like, like faith calls us we get so many yeah. things we're supposed to do. From, and a lot of times it's other people. And we ignore it. We ignore it so many mm-hmm. times. And it could be someone saying, wow, like, you're really talented in music. Or even something similar as, like, you're one of the best cooks I've ever Right, tasted. yeah. Best food I've ever tasted. And something simple as that could be an indicator, mm-hmm. like, maybe I should have my own business. So apart from yep, accent, that's how it starts. Or music, it's something similar to mm-hmm. the fact of, yeah, we we miss our calling too many times because we get wrapped up in in what we think we should be doing to provide, and yeah. we're in survival mode so many times. I did think another time is like we're either in chill mode too much or survival mode. And oh my gosh, especially in LA, you know, we are in half the time in survival mode because honey, that rent is no joke, and if you ain't doing nothing, you probably really ain't doing nothing. You know what I mean? Like you're probably not doing anything because there's too much to be done. You got to pay rent. First of all, you, if you are an entertainer, there's headshots, there's classes, there's, Oh my gosh, there's so much. There's just not enough time for you to be sleeping on yourself, you know? You know and so right now, well, it's not, we're in LA. Nobody's mm-hmm. anything, right? Not no filming is <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Something's going on. Crazy. Nobody's taking headshots. Nobody's <laughs> casting. No meetings are going on. Um, maybe some virtual meetings, but nobody's hiring. Nobody's. It's literally a moment where we could create, build, learn, yes. and find out who we are right now mm-hmm. with our judgment. Mm-hmm. It's like the judgment free ice cream where you can just eat. <laughs> it's like God is giving us time. To be better, like everybody's always like, I want to be my best. Dad. I got to live my best life, but okay, baby, you don't have time to do that when you're living in the real world. You know what I mean? You got bills, you got kids. Some people got kids. God is saying, I'm gonna put a pause. I'm gonna put a pause on life for you, for you, so you can sit down and you can focus on what is it that you need to do. Like, why is it that you can't accomplish things? Um, uh, what do you need to learn so you can be better and maybe get that promotion? Or you know what I mean? Like, there's so much, yeah. and we get. The, the time, you know, if you if you obey and like stay home like they're telling people, um, you get the time to work on yourself without, like you said, the judgment, the pressure, the time, and people saying, yeah, I need this, I need LA. it now. The hmm? was rent for us in LA. Listen, <laughs> they, I, well, I was sending that to all my friends. I said, screenshots, because I need people to know like, no, do not, this is not the time to panic. This is the time to take it for yourself. Call your family. I've spent so many conversations. Like, I think I would have never probably had these these long conversations that I've had in this time period with my family if we didn't have this. Right. Because I didn't have time. And it's not because I didn't have time. I think the times never synced up, you know? When you live in L.A., you're on a different time zone. So I can't just call my mom at 8 p.m. when it's, you know, 11 or, or midnight. She sleeps. So... I've had so many great conversations. I've, I've, you know, spent a lot of quality time with myself, and I'm not. I'm, there's no complaints for me yeah, about I mean, this. I mean, I would love. We don't have to pay rent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when did that ever happen in our adult lives? Right. All right, so I want to jump on to talking about uh, the oval and that casting process. How did it work? Did you oh self tape? Did you? Tell me about it. That casting process was one in its own. It's one in one because I auditioned for one role, which was the role of Lily. Um, Obviously, I I didn't get that, but that was it. I did not audition for anything else. Now, Raven Drummer, which is Tyler Perry's casting director. Okay, wait. Can I get my my laptop charger so this story doesn't cut off? Hold on one second, okay? Hold on one second. Let me just grab it. Raven so, Drummer. Right? 
Raven Drummer is so great. First of all, if you're an actor, this is for anybody watching this, she puts up Actor Minute Mondays, which are like her her ways of sharing information because people ask her so many questions. Actors ask her all the time, obviously. And um, she gives away those free tidbits. You don't have to go to a workshop, class. Um, she gives them away every Monday. So that's for everybody. Follow her at, at Raven Drummer. Um, but anyway, she... Kim Coleman is who I auditioned for, but Raven Drummer is the one who put out sisters. Oh, hey, hey, Kim Coleman, I know, I know. She, she, her office is right opposite my building. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, I, I, I love yeah. it. So when you said La Brea, oh my gosh, I know exactly where you are. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, she's really dope, Kim. But Raven put out a cast, casting, excuse me, a um, audition notice for mm. sisters. And I, I'm sorry, it wasn't an audition notice. It's called something else. It's called... Um, the Breakdown? Thank you. She put up the breakdown on Actors Access for anybody to to respond to. So you didn't even have to have an agent, actually. You could have just sent your picture. Nice. So I sent my picture, my headshot, my resume, and she sent me an audition, which was a self-tape, obviously, because she's in Atlanta. And... I had already auditioned for the Oval, so since I hadn't heard anything, I was like, let me audition for this, and I did. Next thing you know, I'm at the gym, maybe like two days later, 9 p.m., my manager's like, they're flying you to Atlanta. And I was like, what? Wait, pull up. Could I put the role? You send the audition. Right. Let's just say it's Monday. You send the audition Monday. Yes. No time. Maybe like two, two days later. Two days later, I uh, I was at the gym is 9 p it was late and and they're like tomorrow morning you will be going <laughs> you'll be going to atlanta because they want to see you for um the role the lily role they want to see you for um sisters and then they want to see for another role and i was like oh um what's what's the other role and they were like you will send you the the size and it was denise so that was the character i ended up getting so they flew us all out there like probably like 20 people and there were already actors in Atlanta as well so the actors in Atlanta actors from LA actors from New York all come to photographer studios to audition in front of him right. and I, I first of all just being at his studios I, I was like I can't cry yet but this like this this is a dream and that's why that building the dream building is so like it's the first building you see and it is pivotal because that is where dreams come true. That's where we had our audition right. and um, had my audition in front of him. He was like, Oh, I remember you from my show of loving you. So I'm like, like <laughs> thank you for remembering. Cause that was, that was like a really short, I only had like three scenes probably. Yeah. So for him to say that, I was like, Oh my God, thank you so much. Because that was, that was like three years ago. Anyway, let's start. Let's yeah, yeah. Start here now. Nice. Um, and yeah, so I did it and then I didn't hear back about that for like four weeks. Like, oh my God, about a month. And I was like, you know, with auditions, you just let it go because if you hold on to it and, you know, rack your brain like, oh, I should have done this or is, you can literally go insane. So I just like, oh, out of sight, out of mind, went to um, Jamaica with my boyfriend and got a, a email that said, Melissa, what are your sizes? Um, welcome to the Oval. Uh, you're the you're the role of Denise. And I was like, wait. Whoop. You dropped the mojito. What? I, I got an email. What? So the email was from Wardrobe. So I hadn't heard anything. And so I, before I got excited, Why does that let me email it. Your first. Huh? Wardrobe hits your first when you get the job. <laughs> so I'm, listen, I'm in Jamaica with my drink, like, you know, like not expecting this at all because you let the auditions go. You just wait. You don't ever know the factors, right? It could mean they need more time. They need to, you just let it go. Just let it go. You, it, they went with someone else. Okay, fine. Let it, let it go. Um, so I let it go and I was in Jamaica and I was like, I got this email. Am I drunk or am I, is it, what? So I sent the same email over to my team and I was like, did we book this? And they said, yes, but they jumped the gun. So hold on. I was like, but we booked it. <laughs> so I'm like in Jamaica screaming randomly. People are like, what's going on? And just on the phone screaming and me and my boyfriend screaming. And um, then a week later, um, Tyler Perry called me and he's like, 
Well, I, uh, I, uh, I know you're playing Denise on my new show, but I want you to try another role. You'll have to go back in and audition for it. I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, first, yes. But then I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm sorry. I have a role. I'm going to tell him. So all these things in my head while he's talking, but then also, too, like, realizing that I'm talking to Tyler. I'm talking to Tyler Perry. He's talking to me. He's telling me he wants to do what? So it's, like, so much going on in my mind that I literally, first thing I said, no lie, I said, Hi, Tyler Perry. Okay. The first second thing is, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> like, I first and last went out because I was like, this is, no, this is real. He's calling me. He's telling me these things. Okay, so hi, hi is first and foremost when he got done talking. And then I was like, yeah. I said, I already read the script, obviously, for The Oval because of Denise's character. So I know about Ruth's right. character. I know what she's going to come in there and do. And you know, I don't know what you want to do for the for the spinoff, but I'm down. I want to do it. And he was like, okay, well, you have to go back and audition for Kim Coleman. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I like, yeah. I thought, I, but but you know what? It was only because I hadn't I had auditioned for three other roles, but not that one. So I was like, totally get it. Fine, no biggie. So I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Miss Kim, which I did. I was like, okay. Kim, Kim, Miss Kim, excuse me, is what I call her. Don't ever get it twisted. Uh, Miss Kim, what is he looking for? Because, like, what? I don't know. Like, I've read what I've read. I've prepared what I prepared, but I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to hit it dead on. Please tell me what he's looking for. So she's like, okay. Um, and she gave me some notes. I did it. She's like, I don't think you need to do it again. I'm gonna send it, and she sent it immediately, like that moment, and. Um, I think I heard back another week later and they're like, you're Ruth. And I was like, Oh, oh no. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Cause it was, it was not, um, it wasn't a walk in the park. It was like going from that Lily additional, uh, excuse me, initial role, uh, not even getting that to a whole nother role that I didn't even audition for to then another role that I had to go back and I, it was a lot, but I'm grateful yeah. for it all. So that's how. That, and, and that space of time probably is just was so either happy because you didn't go to the next level where you're talking to Tyler Perry, excited, nervous. People, a lot of people don't understand the. You don't understand till it happens. I literally, he he didn't say hello. He said, "I'm about to start my vacation right now, but um, I have a a couple moments." And I said, "Hello," <laughs> and he said. I'm about to start my vacation. He thought I couldn't hear him, but I was like, no, no, I just didn't know this is real. I thought, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Who is that? And then I just got really silent because I'm like, okay, professional. So he talked. And then when he left that, you know, breathing room open, I was like, first of all, hi, Tyler. And then, and then I, and then I told him, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Well, how is it, how is it like uh, working on a soap set, especially as a lead? Like what, is it a fast process like the ones you do currently in CBS and these places? Is it like a fast process where you get sides, you have to know what's going on and just I think people, people, mm. tell people how hard the technique is? Honey, it's no joke. A tech, yes, technique is what it should be called. It should be called the TP technique for Tyler Perry because, honey, we get those um, – it's not even sides. It's um, when filming, we've, we've gotten the scripts ahead of time. And because Tyler Perry shoots like triple fast, as fast as other um, productions, we have readers that are available at all times. So it's literally work and nonstop work from the moment you get there because, you know, they, they grab you, you go hair, makeup, okay, from hair and makeup, wardrobe. Okay, we need you on set. You know, it's like it's, it is work and it should be treated as such and people come in focused. So that we can get the job done but i think people need to realize that yeah he he shoots three times as fast um we finish in about uh, 25 episodes in about three to four weeks where some people do six months for that for that amount or 12 or just 12 episodes yeah. take six months so it is a lot of hard work it's just about staying focused and making sure that you're always prepared because he also is the writer so he could switch up stuff 
You know what I mean? So you have to always know what your intentions are, who your character is, what you're going through in the scene, because he could just change something up for you. And how are you going to deliver it if you don't understand the scene, you know? So it's all about people taking their craft seriously, especially, that should be period, but especially when working with Tyler Perry, because he works triple S fast. And even though he's forgiving because he knows he's working triple S fast, you just want to make sure because other people have done it that you can keep up as well. Mm -hmm. What, what in your training so far, you would say best prepared you for working that fast? I know that's totally different from shooting a feature where you have time, you know, it takes mm -hmm. a long period to set up this, you know, it's not on a set most probably. What's prepared you the most for this, for your moments right now? I, I think like, I think the, the repetitiveness of, constantly having like an audition or like um because i had just come off of, of working on this web series it was called uh hello cupid for black and sexy tv and um we shot that pretty fast but it was only eight episodes so totally different from 25 um and i think that because i had freshly come off of that and then after that auditions after auditions plus I was like helping others with self tapes helping my boyfriend helping friends so it was I was like constantly acting and I think that's what it's what I guess they say practice practice makes perfect right so like I was always practicing because if it wasn't for me it was for somebody else because if I'm helping with self tapes honey that voice on the end even though you cannot see me is going to be pretty dramatic like I'm going to give it to you as if I'm acting so um I think that because I consistently kept my mind on on acting when it came time to, cause no one trains you for Tyler Perry shoot. All they do is tell you like, Hey, we shoot a little differently here. So we just want to give you the, you know, the pep talk and update you on how we do things so that way you're not overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Like they have a talk with you, but <laughs> the talk is just that it's, it's a talk. And then you're expected to deliver after the talk so it's like what can you do to prepare for something like that you can always be working on acting whether it's um you uh, show facts is a website that has sides you can literally go on there get sides for things that are auditioning right now so you know what people are looking for you know what people are writing like inform yourself and equip yourself with what's going on um uh, and then just start doing your own self tapes some people even go as far as take the sides from show facts and I'm not saying do this by any means, but I just know that if, you know, your team is down for it, you should. But take the size from side packs if they fix, fix fit your description as a as an actor. Right. And um, film it, send it to your team, and they can just, you know, blind in, blind send in your audition and say, audition and say, you know, uh, this is an actor that I think would be great for this role. Please take a look. They've already done a self right. And that's proactive, right? That's proactive, and therefore a casting director may say no, but they may say, "All right, let me take a look." Now you got an audition because why? On your own, you are being uh, you are being a student of the work, a student of the craft. And I'm not saying you know it happens like that for people, but I do know that that is an option for managers and and agents who are hungry. Like, okay, I can see you playing this. I'll go ahead and you know send them a, an email and let them know. So always just be working on it. There's no reason if it's something that you want to do for the rest of your life yeah. to not put it in your life now. You yeah, know? nice. Now that's great tips and uh, just precedents and stuff. I could just see you coming out today and just like grinding. I know there was so much in between all those. I mean, those just working on this uh, new project. There's probably have been mm -hmm. a lot of auditions and a lot of, not even knows that's the thing we don't even get knows but uh just to wrap up mm -hmm. i definitely want to, to just get from you your process of what i call failure and failure doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing it's a learning experience mm. um from your process of coming to la and just being told no a lot what has those knows affected how has that affected Melissa L. Williams as a person, not just as an actor, but as a person? How has that shaped mm -hmm. who you are? All of the no's. Um, so I'm a big faith person. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God. And I know that 
I was put on this earth for a reason. And once I found out through the the fruits of pursuing acting that this is what I was supposed to be doing. Um, Cause you don't, cause I feel like if you're not aligned, you're not going to get blessed in that area, right? Like why would God bless you in that area if it's not what he put you on the earth to do? So that's why I say the fruit. Um, but for me, it's like, I just knew that no matter how many no's I get, I know there's a yes because of the yeses I've gotten in the past. And um, I just made sure to keep my mind focused on working on myself, keeping my spirit and my mind strong because the nose can really affect you in a way if you're not strong mentally and probably cause you a lot of like negative um, issues. And so I just say I, I, I worked on my mind by keeping it positive, by reading, you know, things from Les Brown, Wayne Dyer, uh, P.D. Jake, listening to all the passages I listened to, which is Mike Todd, everybody. I, I literally was just soaking my mind with positivity because I knew I'm going out there and I'm going to go against 20,000 of people. Like literally for one role, um, a casting director has told me that 5,000 people they have to go through to get the 20 to come in their office to audition. That's crazy. So I'm just like, okay, first of all, it's just a blessing to even be considered when you do get an audition opportunity. So I'm grateful for that. And and that gives me the yes. Without the yes from the after, like the, we don't know what they're going to say, but I do know I got approved to come in, in the office. And that's all that matters because they're the ones that's going to be continually casting. You know what I mean? They said yes to me. Now, whether the producers of this project say yes, I can't, I can't control that. But what I can control is me making an impression for the casting office so that they can say, boom, you know what? I think Melissa would be perfect for that role. You know what I mean? So I've kind of like switched the focus from focusing on the nose because you don't get them. That's just, that's just what it is. Can't even sugarcoat it. That was serious face. You don't get them. But you will get yeses if you, if you can shift your focus on like, I'm like, I'm going to make an impression on this room and not necessarily on this specific project because I know I'm going to get a project. What project? We don't know that. So I'm not going to focus on that. But what I do know is they said yes to me to come to this room. I got to put on the show, you know? So that, that's all. Like it's, the no's are going to happen. The no's happen in real life, dating life, jobs. Like that's just part of life. But the yeses are also part. So you have to remember that and, and then shift your focus to like, okay, let's switch it to, let me make an impression on these casting directors. Not, not, not anybody else, but let me just do it for that reason because i know that that is going to bring me more opportunities if i make a good impression yeah. it's just thinking about the future and not the present like the no's are always the present thing no you didn't get it no you didn't get hired no you're you know what i mean like it's the present thing but the future is hard to vision but if you like purposely focus yourself on stuff in the future that mind is elevated yeah. honey and that's all we could do is keep it elevated because especially like at times like this like Mm -mm. keep it in positive mm -hmm. like the news is great we know what's going on but there's other things that i can do positive things that i can do to occupy my time right so i think that that right there is probably the best thing is to keep your mind full of positivity no matter what it is because we are in a world where there's so many negative factors could come in and that could throw you off your train and i know probably there might be actors leaving LA in this time, thinking that they would. Yeah. So, I, I appreciate your message just now. That has been amazing. This has been fun. I don't know why the video is cracking up right now, but <laughs> but this has been amazing. And thank you so much for coming on. I can't wait. Thank you. Dear. Enjoy Oklahoma. Can't wait to. Have you. Thank you. I'll let you know if I if I run into the Tiger King, All right? right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. They the zoo is here, so I may just you know have to stop by there when this is all over. Yeah, let me know. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Have you a too. good day. Bye.